Criteria for engaging a loving conversation. So in this self-talk, and again, this is Mike Ratner.com, uh, developing my concepts for a book which I'm writing called LovingConversations.com, Loving Conversations, which also can be a podcast, which is probably what this digital recording will be used for. Uh, this is to sort of create sort of um, digital notes for myself and uh, sharing my thoughts and thinking. I had just ordered a number of used books. Well, i got to count how many in total. That would be good resource material uh, from well-known writers on uh, relationships, communication, and um, um, popular books. I won't name titles right now, but I'll have a special uh, program. i just go over them in probably a video, too, so you can see them. And uh, because I want to have really great reference material, although some of my ideas are very unique. And so what I want to talk about right now in regards to having a loving conversation is how to engage someone that, um, let's, and this is because I want to go into an actual field experience here. I'm going to do some action research in, in, a, in, a, in a moment, probably tomorrow, but I'm going to be practicing this. So I'm just creating some of my thought notes right now. So bear with me. And you're having a potential ad, adversarial uh, uh, position because you're going to have to maybe critique somebody, and it could be performance at work, or in this case, an obligation that was not met, and just you know, flim flam, uh, just you know, totally disregard to their own agreement. So they didn't keep their word, but but worse, because of the way they set the expectations uh, that weren't met, um, you could be lulled into believing that the person's you know very sincere, and and you know they're going to keep their word. So. And someone who I think is strong-willed uh, comes off as being like, hey, this is what we're going to do, it's settled, and we agree on it, and then they break it. You have to sort of reapproach them. So of late, you know, I've been thinking about that. I don't want to seem naive talking about loving conversations because you may have an adversarial uh, experience in how to still maintain a loving environment, at least the potential to sort of maintain um, the space that I describe as metasphere, and, and really this will all be explained in the book, but you can get some idea either reading my communityconversations.com dissertation or um, my morb writing, M-O-R-B dot masstrance.com. Because the goal of a loving conversation is, it, 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 you know, it's an allowing enough space that you can chase the dragon's tail for a bit, but you're not lost, when I mean in a circular firing squad, uh, dynamic or catch-22 where you're never out of your own story. So you're looking for a collaboration here like, hey, this is the space that's going to be very allowing for us to address all our needs, taking care of the agenda and each other at the same time. So the loving conversation uh, can be honored or at least filtered into a dynamic so it can occur. That would mean like, you know, creating a recipe and adding the right ingredients. But sometimes things need to be perhaps extracted to be better understood, but also to be pointed out, like, hey, something had happened, it affected the metasphere, so a situation occurred, it affected the setting. All this is written about um, fairly extensively, although I could see a book or a journal just on metaspheres, which the French might call ambiance. And we're talking about, you know, a social atmosphere, a field of, a field of engagement, which could be feeling the other person's vibe or something's funky in, in the environment. It might be very much a vestibular feeling, which means it's sensory oriented, intuitive intuition, or just some kind of angst. But being t attuned to what it is you're feeling, it could be that gut feeling that is vestibular because we're talking about at the at belly level. Uh, but going with the feeling first and, 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 sensor, and through a sensory apparatus of being able to filter it, better understand what happened, the excuses, and if there was irresponsibility, how does it be addressed? And if there was a loss that had occurred, and it could be an opportunity, time, money, other resources, in, in this case, trust, um, can it be repaired? Or is it you know three strikes and you're out? Or this is so bad that... Um, you don't even want to deal with it anymore. You need to move on so the friendship or the relationship has concluded. So that level of responsibility is sort of the challenge because, one, you want to have clarity, right? If something else had happened, but if it was clearly just irresponsibility, or, and then you know you can't necessarily rely on that person or trust them. And they, 
may just make up excuses. And sometimes we could be very allowing, want to be loving. We have to sort of set a standard, at least be grounded enough to say, hey, this works for me, this, this doesn't. Or it doesn't give value to the proposition of what we talked about. You didn't honor the word and the agreement. In my case, I actually flew out to another city to meet this person who said they picked me up from the airport and then we were going to drive to another city to meet with uh, an esteemed a person who was really excited about our visit. Well, um, she didn't show up just getting a text when I landed at the airport and said, oh, you know, go rent a car. Um, you know, you're on your own. I got something else. I'd come up. <laughs> and it was like something that, like a fly in the room. You know what I mean? Something else had come up that at that point had gauged their attention and now had gone off to whatever got, you know, got in the way or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So without going into my story, but obviously it had affected me, I had to make immediate uh, changes because I wasn't going to rent a car and drive to another city when this person in particular we were going to drive together. Um, I just totally revamped all the plans but it had affected things because other people wanted to come into play, but because we were going to drive to another city, I couldn't visit with those people. And in the meantime, they had made other plans because they weren't expecting me anymore. And now I suddenly became available. That doesn't look too good. So, and then, you know, it's like, wow, you have to arrange everything from that point on immediately. So it had affected things and, and not in a good way. So in a way, it's inexcusable because a lot of things had affected and the last minute change of plan had cost a lot of money. I estimated over a thousand dollars for me because I had to rearrange a flight and uh, booking hotel rooms and just, you know, um, not doing what was originally planned also was off-putting to, to the people we had made the agreement with and, and not what my preferred choices would have been originally before the person invited themselves into the, into the engagement. And that being with them became the plan. And then they just fell out of favor. So <clears throat> it can be ignored and just skimmed over. So one, you don't talk to that person again. Or two, you're very leery of them if it comes up. And you think the person would have apologized in the meantime or made the approach themselves. And it's because, to me, so it's either ignorance or arrogance. I think it's more uncaringness that is um, in place. The person doesn't take a moment to look at the effects of what, how they affected things. So I write also a lot about effect. I'm talking about A F F E C T, more than just the effect of things. I'm looking really more at effect. And effect to me is an energy power that I describe as affection. Someone who's really caring for something, and it could be not just people, but particularly where your passions are related to projects and your purpose here. So the way that you're present in the way that makes the, this a powerful dynamic. Talking about loving conversations isn't allowing for the person to come clean and clear. That can only happen if they have some measured understanding of the effect. And if I don't share, and a lot of people don't, they get disappointed and or they're mad at the person and uh, they don't talk about it. So, some, or they could talk about it, but <clears throat> it's done in such a way that um, it's more in the way that we do want to confront things and where it may be appearing of a serial I have a purpose here to sort of really want wanting to expand awareness. So one, the person becomes aware of what their interplay had affected, and maybe this is happening in dozens and dozens of other circles of other people. Or there could be a trail of this going back to a very long past. Now, I'm not looking to intimidate or to interfere because that would be karma. I want to have permission and actually be invited to explore this with the person if they're seeking, number one, to make uh, some kind of admission, um, you know, they may want to sort of make up for it in some capacity. But at least it needs to be addressed. And so the, the makeup here is like, hey, sharing how I was affected and how it affected other people and created a sort of metasphere in a situation that cost money and um, just you know, cause a lot of unnecessary stress and change over. And at least it should have been talked about or uh, addressed at the time rather than just, you know, oh, just change my mind or whatever. You don't show up. And um, nothing has been sort of set up and say, hey, you know, I got Roger or so-and-so to come and pick you up. I arranged an Uber. 
and you're paying for it to meet me over here and then we can go later or you know something that could be reasonable but to just sort of all of a sudden just change your mind when the person's expecting something to have happened and a whole week had occurred prior to where there was a solid agreement confirmed the day before you were leaving so you got to wonder so um, obviously some people would say well why would you even want to deal with that you know just forget about it but the person and with their dynamic is a part of our community and uh, where I might no longer wish to associate with them or not on the level that would allow them to engage and interact to have that kind of effect again I do want them to be aware of it I aware of it and eye awareness is a person who become a bit more attuned to their thoughts, words, and way that they're actualizing, they're acting, um, to understand those impacts and whether they are really contributing to this ideal dynamic that we're improving life for society and overall, and we're consistent, you know, in our compassion and in, in consciousness, how we're showing up. And if there's been a pattern of this, which there has, not necessarily affecting me, but were early signs that you know, other people had dealt with this, thinking I would be different. I don't know. But anyway, I'm too trusting in giving people a chance, but not necessarily always a second chance, although I do do that, even to thirds and fourths. So the dynamic here is to be able to come back to it. Yeah, we can laugh at it, but it's a sad laugh because something was lost in the opportunity of that time. And sure, we can be trusting in the universe and say, hey, whatever happens, you know, it was meant to be, or da-da-da, da-da-da, you know, and sort of like, you know, write it off. But not so easy for me because I don't want to live my life like that. I don't want to have repeated patterns where something was agreed upon, thoroughly talked about in advance, and then just poop it off and just leaving a lot of other people in the lurch. And some are still in the dark, like, Hey, Grey Wolf didn't show up. What happened to uh, his friend or whatever? I don't know. That's why I'm looking to have a, conver a loving conversation about it. But loving in a way which it's like, hey, I, I cannot really necessarily be endearing to you more than just allowing for you to explain and for you to be aware of what happened, at least on my side. And then, yeah, whatever, you know, you're going to excuse it or ignore it how it's going to be dealt with is really the measure for me right now. Um, so it's it's done. I'm checking with the person. And I feel it's my responsibility. Hey, was everything okay? What's going on for you? But no, it's not quite right. This person's not ready to handle the level of responsibility of any type of uh, potential partnership, really, <laughs> in my world, because we were going to collaborate on a podcast and look at developing the channel and uh, get infiltrate one particular realm of a channel within the channel idea in the new age world and things like that where you have a lot of people who are sort of hmm, you know what i mean right so that reflects that and anyway once it's addressed and hopefully cleanly you know there still might need to be an energy shower which we can talk about in another podcast creating the wave shower uh dot com perhaps you know as a light wave wand and shower to energize and cleanse <laughs> your chakras and aura so you can come out of these experiences and go okay you know we didn't need to have this conversation unless that had happened and who knows what potential was missed but obviously we weren't ready for it and it may not just have been me because this particular person um, in two other cases, I can imagine there was always resistance to some people wanting to meet this person. They're fairly esteemed, but at the same time, they know that they're, that the impact of meeting this person uh, could be a self-esteem issue or just not wanting to really change because there's that sense that if you do, this person through Darshan or the way that they're present to people and their level of operating, it's either going to uplift you or challenge you to some element, right? And the challenge sometimes can go in the reverse order, right? The challenge to me is to be better, right? And how we can improve in a situation that wasn't really complete or to the level it could have been. But other people are challenged in which they sort of challenge, and it's okay to challenge a status quo sometimes, but sometimes people are just challenged to be challenged uh, because their ego is threatened or there could be something else that, you know, they haven't seen before, so they can't really 
they're not able to really process 